I want to make some lace. So, I agreed on making a specific kind of white garment for my cousin. And when we were, you know, discussing ideas and mood boards, I told her that I could come up with this nice lace that I had a couple of photos on the mood boards. She was like, can you do it? And I was like, yes, I can. And in reality, I can't yet. So this is a video of me trying to make said lace. Now, there are a lot of kinds of laces in the world. And what I'm going to try today specifically is something called Romanian lace. I saw it on Pinterest and I am obsessed. I think it looks so nice. And it feels like a, I, I don't want to say beginner, but it feels like a gentler type of lace to learn. Because lace can be really complicated and take years to make and perfect. But Romanian lace seems like it can be really hard, but it also can be easier to learn. It's a lace that is kind of like, from what I understood, it has a lot of like crochet elements and sewing elements. That is what I'm going to try and learn how to do today. I've never done it. I have a selection of things here today. I have a few yarns. I have a few thicker ones, a few very thin ones. Um, I have cotton, I have viscose, acrylic. I have different um, weights. I got here some crochet hooks. Um, the thickest one I got is two and a half millimeters. The thinnest one I have is 0 0.25 I have some tapestry needles um, in a couple of different sizes, small versions, scissors. And from what I researched, there are a couple of ways that I saw it being done. So I saw this one that I really liked the tutorial of. I saw her using a mat. I don't have a mat, but I have this one piece of those kind of child mats. Like um, I had a big piece, but I don't know where it is. I have only this. So I can do a tiny one just to practice. Another lady I saw explaining like what you need, what materials you use. She uses um, fabric and sews the lace on the fabric and then she snips it off. Um, and the, the woman that does the, the one with the mat, she just pins it on and then she pins it off. So oh, I also have this, um, a, little, a few little pearls because um, I feel like maybe I can have some pearls in it. It is my understanding that for Romanian lace, it has this kind of thick cord, not thick, but like a thicker cord that you use to like make your design. And then uh, once you have a lot of that cord, you lay it in the way that you want. And there are a few different techniques, a few different kinds of stitches, I guess, that you use in between that thick cord to like fill in the spaces to make like lace, right? So this crochet Elena Rugal studio, she just has some amazing stuff. She has a video on how to do the cord and it's a specific kind of cord that doesn't have like a right or wrong side. Chain stitches. So two chain stitches. Chain stitch away from the clock. What? The clockwise is going to confuse me. Now turn the work clockwise. That is anti-clockwise. No, it's not. Not me calling Elena a liar when she's just helping me out a lot here. Wait, Elena, wait, wait, wait. I'm doing it wrong. I'm so confused. Let me see if I got it without looking because I, I got the gist of it. It's not too hard. It's just, it, it's hard. Go. Why is this so hard? It's just a cord. It's literally just a cord. Okay, single crochet. It's working. It is working. I ha I'm having a problem with my tension um, and that's always really hard to like tackle. Single crochet. Girls, it's working. It's working. I'm really struggling with my choice of either the tension because I feel like I'm not doing such a harsh tension and my problem is the choice of yarn 
and hook I also don't think that's wrong so it must be my tension the force I'm using just to do like a single crochet with two loops so I'm trying to do looser stitches so I'm going to power through this and make a lot and then I'm going to be back and continue doing the design I want to try one of these other yarns because maybe it's the yarn I'm so frustrated I will try this one is much thinner I will use this 1.75 also the noise, the constant banging and drilling starts getting me like enraged. <laughs> like the fact that I'm not being able to do this plus the constant banging is, do is doing something to my psyche and it's not good. Okay, this one already looks so much cuter than this one. So I'm going to continue with this one and I have to do a lot. See like how in the beginning it was really tiny. You can already tell just by this, like this was tiny. I mean, I did change the hook, but it works so much better. This is a two millimeter. This was 1.75. And I can clearly see that this, it's supposed to, I'm supposed to use a two millimeter for this size of thread. So it really was, I was using the wrong hook for the thread and I, I had to like understand the tension but now I think I'm going to be able to do it. I have my cord and it actually took me a little while. I thought this was going to take me like an hour most and I took it took me like at least three hours, three to four hours to do just this and that's insane. I thought it was going to be easy because it is just crochet with a tiny hook and I usually use tiny hooks I'm going to use this little mat thing I can do like whatever shape I want with this and then I come in with more thread and I will fill in the shape so I will um, do four different shapes with this big um, long cord and then I will try four different techniques of filling for the Romanian point lace. Do you guys also get frustrated when your like incredibly detailed project that you want to do with, with a technique that you've never done before doesn't get done in like two hours and the sun starts setting and you're like, oh, it feels like I haven't done anything even though you did. You're just, you're learning a new technique and these things take time like textile arts take time but you refuse to understand that and you're like I should be done by now and you start getting really frustrated and you want to stop but you're like no I need to do this I want to do this I will like it when it's done but right now I just feel like it should be done already well I feel like that sometimes so I actually gave myself five little working areas i'm going to start with like the normal feeling technique the one that looks like a little mesh <gasps> but should join the end together okay i need to sew you in can... the end together disgusting all right i join here here and here in the first row of brussels stitch she didn't do a knot or anything she gets her yarn she has it already and then she weaves it in like this all the way to where you're supposed to start she pulled her needle so like this and that's it she started she started without like weaving in or, or doing a little knot or anything so that's what I'm going to do. See? Your needle goes in one of the loops and out from the top. This. Ooh, I think I think I'm doing it right. So this will certainly take a little while. 
we are making lace after all. I did expect this part to take a while. I just didn't expect the cord to take so long. Look, this is what we have so far. I accidentally changed yarn midway through it. The problem is I kind of started freehanding it and I did the loops in random places where I shouldn't have. It's looking a bit messy. Okay, so next I'm going to, in this one, do the next um, style of filling that she does in the same video. Is one with like some little veins here. And I think that one's going to be maybe not easier. I think it looks a little bit more time consuming even though it fills less of the area. But it has a lot of like loop arounds. But I think that one has less potential of me messing up. Hey, so I have a little piece of lace. This is what it's looking. I'm actually quite pleased with it. I thought it was gonna look shit. After I did the filling, I did this one, which, ow, I had a bad choice of like yarn for space, for technique, because most of the things are, I did with the same um, yarn that I use in the cord. But for this one and the end of the filling stitch, I used the thinner yarn, which I think looks cute for the filling stitch but not for this one so i really don't like this technique and i thought i was gonna like it but it doesn't look good the way that i did it the other techniques look so much prettier and are nicer to do um after this one i went for this kind of braid looking one and i love this one it looks amazing i want to try doing one like the thick cord for the for the border and then this one with a thinner yarn i think it's gonna look really nice and then this one also really 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 cute uh, it goes like from side to side and then it starts kind of braiding like this really pretty then this one I had the like tiny spot and I was supposed to do this one in this one and this one in this one because this is a pretty Stitch that I just kind of did it here because I had this space left. And I didn't want to try to fill in also about the mat this mat is quite um Thin it's not too thick. So the pins being up like this is quite annoying because the, the uh, yarn gets caught in it a lot and when i pull it down it's better because the yarn doesn't get caught too much but um i cannot rest it in the table fine like it's kind of wobbly and it's kind of dangerous to like put my hands here to work like this on my research i saw that a lot of people actually use either mash or just like a normal fabric to make their lace on i just don't want to do it i like having a hard surface to work on let me take it out to see how it looks i actually didn't take it out yet okay let me see Ooh, i thought the filling just the filling would kind of flop out but it doesn't it really does stay oh that's really nice oh my god i actually really like it what I think I'm gonna do now is practice on my own. This technique is really like freehandable. <laughs> you can just like imagine and just like go from side to side and do random shapes. Um, I think I'm going to make some more cord, figure out a different surface to work on. I wanna do like a bigger design and freehand it and test out like different yarns like maybe this yarn with this one in the filling so this one with this one in the filling so that's what i'm going to do right now and i will catch up with you when i finish doing a lot of cord okay so the thing is i have off-white slash pearly yarns and then i have white white yarns and i don't know if i should make a lot of like both of them and separate them probably i should mix and match just for like the sample sake the sake of like testing different thicknesses but at the same time i'm thinking maybe i should do separate white and separate off white because if i do that i think it would look much cuter okay i don't know but i'll just i'll make the the, the cords that's going to take me a while and then i'm going to think about that hi friends i'm back it has been ages and I need to do this now, but there are so many constructions going on. There's two constructions in the building behind me, one on top of me. And I just, it's not only that the recording is going to be annoying because these sounds are going to be in the recording, they're here and they are annoying me. Like I'm over stimulated with like these many constructions going on around me very loudly. Making all of these cords took me 
a long time, like a long, long time, a few hours. I'd say like eight to nine hours just to make this, which is very like underwhelming, frustrating, I guess. There's this anatomy about this cord that makes it so it is a Romanian lace cord that I need to do it to make the Romanian lace. But because it's just crochet, I just thought I would do it so much faster. But yeah, I think I'll do separate off-white and white, even though they could look good together. I think I'll just separate them. I got this towel because I don't have a big mat, but I have this cork board thing and I'm going to use this as a base. I'm moving soon, so ah. I'm taking it out. Get out, get out, get out. Ah. I took a piece off of it. Oh well. Okay, this is too big. And I just want to make the design and fill it out with the techniques that I learned when I did this. Um, I am not about to lie to you guys. This um, working space is not really that comfortable. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go for leaves. Um, so she wanted, she was like, oh, I'm not that into flowers. Leaves would be fine. So I guess I'm doing some leaves. So I did run out of pins, so I'm going to work on these first, and then I'm going to work on this one. As you can see, I think, I did more like, just like double leaves, and then I tried to like, um, join them all with one cord. So I did like this kind of flower shape here, and then I went with this as a stem kind of thing all the way to this one. So it's all like joined, and then for this one, I went more for like these shape here this kind of leaves that do this because i think um my cousin is going to like this kind of shape i'm going to try to work around this one and i did a bigger one with the one with the pearls and now i'm going to start to fill it in there are like techniques like stitch techniques um and then there is the filler technique and i want to use the filler technique for the outside and like in between and the closed shapes the leaves I want to use like filling techniques, not just like the, the overall filling. I'm just like saying words, but I, I think I'll try to put images in the screen just to kind of try to say what I'm thinking, try to like illustrate what I'm, what I'm thinking, but it's going to bring you here and start filling these out. off-white color like the pearl color and I learned some things first of all um, I did cut my um, cork board because it was like spending too much into the room and I wasn't able to walk around and when I decided to add the half of the cork board underneath this first one I ended up bending all of my pins so that's not ideal. So I left a little gap here because I saw um, in Elena's video, she had a flower of like the the middle bit um, not laced, I guess. And it looked really nice. So I did this as well and I like it a lot. This one I really love. It's like, um, it goes like tree like this and tree like this and tree like this. Also, I just uh, filled this one with like crisscrossing and like kind of weaving in. Um, and I did this here as well, and I don't love it. This I don't love, and I also don't love here that I just did a straight, um, I just went from side to side and left it like this. I kind of hate it, but I hate it because it's the thin yarn in a thicker thread. Here I have a smaller gap, and I did this just like side to side, and I like it a lot here. So, and it is with a thicker yarn. So I might use this if I'm using a thicker yarn in smaller gaps. And I really like the filling. It doesn't really matter the thickness. This kind of filling that is kind of, I think, the bulk of Romanian point lace. No wonder it's like what people chose to be like the main kind of filling for this kind of lace. I really like it. I'm going to take this off here, see how it exists outside of the... Okay! Oh, it looks so nice. It held on really well. 
Um, so I don't think I'm gonna do this one again. I don't think I'm gonna do this one again. And I think I'm gonna stick with like the medium weight yarns because I use this very, very thin one here and I don't like it so much. Every Everything that has this kind of very, very thin yarn here, it's not my favorite. I thought I would love the very thin one, but I don't. Um, and yeah, also one thing that I didn't mention, I thought I was going to do like a rectangle around the design. The fact that I didn't have a border to work around and work inside and this like would I would just keep going on and on without an actual border to go to kind of bothered me. I think if I'm going if I do the top I can like trace the top with the cord and work inside the top. So I think I will have margins to work in. So um thinking of this and the fact that I just it felt really aimless to do kind of style without having an edge to reach. I decided to do another piece of long cord so that when I start doing this next one, I'm going to do a rectangular border around and I'm going to do everything within that border. I'm not going to work around like this. And I timed myself actually doing this and this took me roughly three hours. So I kind of want to try and uh, sit down and finish this on one go. And I don't know, like thinking lace making, this doesn't feel too long, but at the same time, it is very long because only this took me three hours and this is crochet i will time lapse with a timer this bit here um i only have one camera so you only get one camera angle i'm sorry you do subscribe and like the channel for possible two angles in the future but i'm gonna do that and then i'll talk about the final results and what i learned <laughs> from this anyway <laughs> Look at it! Oh, I love it! I did leave this like huge space here. So it took me quite a while. It took me 13 hours and 20 minutes. And that's just the lace making. The outer cord, that was 3 hours. So 16 hours. And then I'd say like for all the cords within, each of the smaller ones, like 2 hours, 2 hours, 3 hours, this one's quite long. I'd say like 23, 24 hours total. I didn't calculate exactly everything. But this is a time-consuming project. There are a few parts of the technique that I still have to improve the actual like bulk of the lace. I think there are a few times where I mess up the tension. The loop goes in the wrong path. I want to maybe find a different kind of filling technique that is more sparse. But I'm quite comfortable with everything that I learned. Alright! This is, I think, too big of a space to leave without any kind of feeling. I really do like the look of like leaving it a space in blank. It has to be well managed and I didn't think of it before. But when I do a bigger design, I will think of that. Um, but this is it. I will show some close-ups. It has been so long since I started this video that I don't even remember what I told you guys. Basically, I just wanted to get into lace making. Um, I have a few projects that I want to do with lace, but also I just want to get into it. And on um, researching on Pinterest, like lace kinds, I saw this one, which for me, um, looking at it, it seemed like an easy way to do lace. Like not that this is easy or not time consuming. It is very time consuming as you guys saw, but from all of like lace making techniques these ones seem like the more manageable like the easiest like one to tackle first like the one that i could get more surface done and see results because i always like to like see results when i'm starting something new something that i have never done before and i feel like yeah it definitely is true like um i did make you know a few big pieces in in a lot in a lot of time but still for lace making i know that i don't know 20 hours 30 hours 40 hours is not really that much when it comes to lace making like there are some 
lace that like just takes years to get done so i think this was manageable and fun and nice like i really like how it looks and i did learn all of this through youtube tutorials um which was something that i was wondering like can you learn things through youtube tutorials which obviously yes i do have some tutorials myself i learned a lot of crochet through youtube it's great that i have this like free resource that is youtube to learn some things like i don't know if if i could find someone to teach me how to do this where I live, how would I even search it? Like, can someone teach me how to do like Romanian point lace? I don't live in Romania, like, I don't know. I did like making the border. I think it was really a, a really nice idea for me to like do the like square border, rectangle border to work around. Um, these are very big pieces. So I'm thinking of ways that I might be able to use them. Um, I have the tiny one as well, the first one. Maybe I can knit with like a thin thread and make a dress, maybe like this, something like this in the back and I can make like a shirt or like a, a, a cardigan or something. Let me know if you have any ideas of like ways that I can use these giant samples that I made. If you've been point Romanian point lacing, I do have any sources, any tips um, of things that I can do better. Let me know, let me know um, what have you learned with YouTube tutorials or maybe like TikTok tutorials. Yeah, I think this is it for the video. Oh, this is the end of the video. If you made it all the way to the end, because I don't know how many hours this video is going to be. Thank you. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. Like, just to let you know, I have six hours of footage already. I don't know how I'm going to do finish this video, but I think the next, I think, lacing technique that I would like to tackle is um, Irish lace that is more crochet adjacent i think comment down below do you like the results what should i do that's all do subscribe to the channel i'll have my social media here somewhere do follow me on those um comment down below and that's it bye bye